Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back. We're looking at why McDonald's is better in Europe. That's it. That's the title. Uh, now, I don't doubt this because in the little bit I've learned of McDonald's abroad, seems like it's better for a lot of reasons we'll probably get into. Uh, but yeah, I want to see what this is about. This is from a channel called Fern. Be linked in the description down below. Make sure to check them out and check out this whole video uninterrupted because we're not going to watch the whole thing, but most of it. This was suggested on Discord uh, by Jakiplo and Tristan Voltaire uh, very recently, so I do appreciate that. And uh, let me preface this with McDonald's seems to be very popular as a whole still in the U.S., uh, but I'm not one of them. I, I don't go there. I I like their fries like a couple times a year. <laughs> That's it. Really don't like anything there. It's not as cheap as it used to be, and uh, it's just not good. If I'm going to go out, I'd rather get something better quality. That's just uh, how I look at it. Perhaps it'd be somewhere I'd go in a different country. Let's check it out. It's not going viral and getting featured in Drew Gooden videos. He's a UX writer for some of the biggest brands out there. Oh, and Juan also lives in Paris. To get a better look at this weird new packaging, we needed a whoa. man on the ground. Whoa, 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 look at that. Packaging, we needed a man on the ground. Look at that. Whoa, first of all, you get Coke in a glass, which you would get in a typical restaurant here, but not a fast food restaurant. That's cool. Uh, their ice cream machine works. <laughs> if you're laughing or, or maybe you're confused, uh, the ice cream machine is always down. That's like a thing here in the U.S. It's kind of ridiculous. Look at that. It's like a, I don't know if it's silicone or plastic. That's totally different. The containers for all these. And even the burger wrapper. It's still in a wrapper, but look at look at how cute. <laughs> look how proper it is. Wow. Okay. Juan was that man. It's already off to an interesting start. The design is truly spectacular. We will get to that in a minute. First, we need to understand why. Wow. Wow. Okay, that is insane. Look at that. Perhaps that's a happy me. Happy me? Perhaps that's a Happy Meal. Um, even though, I mean, those are cool here in the U.S., but they're just little, like, cardboard, you know, decorated boxes that you flap open. They got the little toy in there and the little kid's food, right? Uh, so they're they're cool, but that is kind of next level, this one. Wow, even the fries look, dare I say, fries look a little different, too? Like, they're thinner? They look good. This is happening. As we reviewed Juan's footage and dug deeper, we realized that it's not just the packaging that makes French McDonald's special. What are those? They look like burnt fries. Chapter 1. The Rise of McDo. Fast food in France do not seem like a good match. No. It's the country of fine dining, Michelin stars and long-lasting dinners in cozy bistros. When McDonald's came to the country in 1997, the French were skeptical. 70, 80 top chefs in the country took out a newspaper ad in the, the country's biggest uh, newspaper saying <laughs> that they thought it was preposterous that McDonald's was coming to France. Oh, wow. And they were like, this is absolutely ridiculous. We need to stop this fast food thing. But they could not help but indulge, like everybody else on the planet. Ici, c'est plus complet, c'est plus sympa. Nonetheless, the company remained controversial for decades. In 1992, it launched a poster campaign showing the French chef and absolute uh, superstar Paul Bocuse secretly dreaming about a Big Mac while examining a pile of plump chickens. <laughs> the chef sued right away for $2.7 million. Ooh. When I Jeez. found out these were real Big Mac advertisements, I immediately contacted my lawyers and instructed them to seek damages. How can I be seen promoting this tasteless, boneless food in which every... Yeah, that is pretty risky move. I mean, McDonald's is a big company. Uh, they've proven at times they're a bold company. But damn, apparently they did not have his permission. They just slap some famous chef on there and be like, oh, I'm dreaming of Mickey D's. <laughs> like, geez, who made that decision? Everything is soft. His lawyer added the ad would be an intolerable insult to the Pope of world cuisine. Seven years later, wow. it got much worse for the fast food chain. At the time, the World Trade Organization and the U.S. were trying to force Europe to accept imports of hormone-induced beef. No, Europe no, no. resisted, and the U.S. Good. 
Tax in turn imposed heavy duties on certain luxury products as a retaliatory measure. Yeah, again, look, I, <laughs> I try to stick up for my country when I can. You know, I still, you know, love the U.S., right? I've lived my life here. It's been great. But some things they do like that. They're just, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> One of the items targeted was Roquefort cheese from France. French sheep farmers were angry and they found a symbol of American global capitalism and trade doctrine like no other, McDonald's. So a French horde went and utterly wrecked a restaurant of the chain, Damn. which was currently under construction in the small French city, Millau. The Damn. horde was led by the activist and sheep farmer José Beauvais, the Frenchest looking man of all time. <laughs> I mean, what, what even is this pipe? The McDonald's incident made Beauvais a national hero and leader of the French anti-globalization movement. Wow. He published a best-selling book two years later, and in 2007 he ran for president. Later Damn. he went into European politics, all on the back of really hating McDonald's. Wow, I did not know that this was going to get heated like this. Oh, this is getting juicy. Jose Bové wow. rose to global fame 15 years ago after he demolished a half-built McDonald's. However, despite Bové's crusade, McDonald's could not be slayed. After you know, as a, someone who doesn't eat there, right? Like, I am not a McDonald's fan. You know, it was literally started in Illinois. Like, that's where McDonald's from. That's where I'm from, from Illinois, right? So it's like a local huge business, I guess you could almost say. Uh, but yeah, I'm just not a fan of it. I know other people are, and that's fine. Uh, but as someone who is not a fan of them and doesn't really care about what they do, uh, I got to admit, um, yeah, they are huge. I, I think they're pretty global. I don't know how many countries they're in, but they are just such a iconic name. Everyone knows the red logo with the gold arches, like they're just so famous. The fact that they've gotten so big and so recognizable basically in like, you know, any country like that is like it is incredible how they've managed to do it. I'm not really sure. I, I'm sure they've had some bumps in a way as, as we're seeing. Right. Like. It's just a, a weird and fascinating, I guess, journey, I bet. I bet it had a competitive advantage over brasseries, bistros, and cafes. The restaurants were designated as takeout joints. This meant the value add tax was just 5.5% versus the 19.6% at gastronomic restaurants. Wow. The food was cheap okay. and the French economy was bad, like always. Mm. Another factor played a much bigger role, though. McDonald's always has been good at inserting itself into the local culture of the country it operates in. Yeah, they're genius at marketing. They're, they become part of culture, part of commercials, part of shows, advertisements. They sneak their way in a lot. That's true. But nowhere has it succeeded on such a scale as in France. The company realized that French customers were drastically different from American ones. Oh, I bet. Americans visited McDonald's more often, at any time of the day, frequently alone, opting for takeout 70% of the time. Okay. In contrast, the French came in groups, spent more money per visit, and significantly more time in the restaurants. 70% oh. of them dropped in during regular lunch and dinner hours. Okay. French McDonald's was not treated like a takeout place by customers. But like any other like bistro, an actual restaurant. as NPR puts it, sitting down to a meal is a cornerstone oh, right. of French culture. So the chain adapted. In the US, its restaurants are designed to attract people from afar. Right. The Golden M glooming high. Call yeah, if you've never been in the U.S. or on a road trip in the U.S. where you're going from like a, you know, town and then a rural place and then you're coming into another town, almost everywhere that I've been, uh, when you're coming in, kind of like this scenery, when you're in the middle of the desert and you're coming into a town, it's not quite like that. It's not taller than the mountains, but uh, yeah, you see they have huge signs, uh, you know, at like the beginning of the town to let you know, hey... You don't know what you're rolling up on. You don't know how small this ghost town might be, but there's a McDonald's, right? Like it's it's so recognizable, and and no other restaurant kind of, I feel like makes the effort to advertise and and have those huge signs that you can see from miles away, Link like to McDonald's. That sweet, sweet driving right. in a car. The interior is often a little uncomfortable, intended to minimize customer visiting time and maximize purchasing turnover. And I will say their interiors were 
very bland up until like a few years ago. I, I don't know when exactly, like maybe five, seven years ago. They started making them a little nicer inside from what I've seen. Remember, I don't ever really go there, but I feel like they've gotten a little nicer. But And let me interrupt myself. You see, this is an early 2000s McDonald's in the U.S. They were just comical, really bad, kind of weird, not comfortable. And this is a newer uh, McDonald's in Chicago. As you can see, a lot more, at least nicer for McDonald's uh, in the U.S. So they've, they've come a long way. I'd say for the most part, you know, unless you're someone who just enjoys sitting down to eat in there, most people don't. Yeah, most people get it to go or, or as a matter of fact, most people go to the drive through So the interior in a U.S. McDonald's probably isn't as important. In France, the restaurants are often sleek, modern, See? and comfortable. You wow. can find relatively cozy corners designated specifically for larger groups of people. That's cool. Sometimes there's even table service. On the outside, the golden M is often subdued on the facade. The All architecture right. is regionally diverse. McDonald's in France almost doesn't feel like fast food. That it looks high end. <laughs> it looks sleek, modern, like you said. It looks high end. Uh, and it just looks like you're going to get a different experience, right? They really use the bright colors here. The, the bright red, the bright golden arch or arches. And just kind of, you see like the characters, you know, the hamburger guy or whatever the hell they are, Ronald McDonald. It is a little more cartoonish, I guess, and a little more like fast food. Like, you know, it's fast food. You're not going to a fancy sit down restaurant, at least here. Whereas it looks like they're taking quite a different approach. That is so apparent. Elsewhere. Even the dumbest show on the planet, Emily in Paris, noticed. This is so chic. There's no grimace, no hamburger. Right. Yeah. What's a hamburger? <laughs> and never mind. Products never mind. are locally yeah, just... sourced, and they are unique Look offerings like the obvious McBaguette, oh but also a Croc McDo. McDonald's does this everywhere, of course, but they do it very well in France. There's a funny little review of the world-famous La Dore Macarons in Paris. They have macarons in McDonald's? Dude, all I've seen so far on McDonald's around the world is just Australia McDonald's, and Australia McDonald's had an epic menu compared to the U.S. one. We our, our menu sucks here, dude, compared to theirs. It's crazy how, like, little we have. And the Australian one was all, like, local, high-quality burgers. Uh, they told you exactly where it was from and stuff, and it, it literally had a bigger menu. On TripAdvisor, the reviewer concludes... The macarons taste the same as the ones sold at McDonald's across the road, except for four wow. times as much as the price. You see, this person from London is not just angry. They are onto something. Wow. The macarons at McDonald's are indeed manufactured by the same company. Oh. <laughs> Today, McDonald's is universally called McDo in France. It is oh, wow. a cultural institution and even has its own slogan. So like, come as you are. It is considered to be one of the biggest and most profitable markets for McDonald's in the world. No kidding. So, McDo is special. But why would they come up with reusable dishware? It seems like quite the hassle. Well, the root of it all is the EU. Realize how powerful the EU actually is. The European Union's executive body, the Commission, can issue directives. These directives mm. are goals, which must be achieved by all member countries. But every country can decide on how to get there. Once translated into national law, the member states must notify the commission, which in turn checks if it is A-OK. -okay. Then the directive needs to be enforced in every country. If a member fails, it may get fined. A wow. particularly famous directive is Directive 2019-904 of the European Parliament and of the Council of 5 June 2019. Okay, wh whatever, nerds. <laughs> Basically, it's a big EU move to reduce the impact of plastic on the environment. This includes the much ridiculed ban of plastic straws and balloon sticks. But in truth, it goes much further than plastic straws becoming paper ones. For example, the directive makes single-use plastic producers pay to clean up single-use trash. Wow. And finally, the important point, it forces member countries to find ways to reduce the consumption of single-use plastics, such as food containers and beverage cups. 
France is always exceedingly extra and top of the class in combating plastic. Single-use packaging is banned from French fast food restaurants. Wow. Which brings Straight us up to this. That's crazy. I mean, it's... I mean, it's green. It's environmentally great decision. It's just crazy as in, like, that is just so not what you, like, what I would expect at McDonald's. Look at that. Chapter that, is, three. that is just so Le different. Is... If you look at the fries basket, like, it looks sort of, you can t immediately tell what it is, like a McDonald's fries basket. Right. So it looks kind of modern. It looks kind of like, you know, apple fried. Yeah, they kind of know. Yeah. Them. You, somehow, I gotta admit, they did a good job of capturing that McDonald's feel. Like, you could tell it's a McDonald's fry still, but it's way into the future, right? It's like a sleek, modernized take on McDonald's. It's um, With the design. Juan so also filmed different. how you ultimately return the, the dishware. The process seems a I lot see. more dignified than the usual dumping of 500 kilograms of trash into yes. an oversized, oh. nasty, overflowing, oh, so eat it all bin. We went on to model the dishware based on his footage and promotional material. Because why not? It's undeniably French. The design studio behind it is called Ilium. They picked a plastic called Trident for the various containers, which is similar to glass and ceramic in its hardness and transparency. M remember, towards the beginning of the video, I thought this was glass. <laughs> it's not glass. Okay. I've never heard of Trident. It sounds fascinating. And preserves the org organ organoleptic qualities of the food. Vents, graining, striations have all been designed to address their functions in the best possible way. Greasy hands need great grip. Yep, the development the of this grip. technology took over two years. And surprisingly, it gets stolen a lot. The reused oh, wow. dishware went viral with good rights. But if people are... What, what are they doing? Reselling them? Are these... Are they, like, taking them away from the restaurant? Like stealing them and reselling them or are they actually replicating them somehow but the reused dishware went viral with good rights but it's just one small part of a much more elegant whole for a country where eating at the restaurant is the norm it makes even more sense that the food is not needlessly overpacked anymore however it's unclear if relying on reusable plastic is actually more sustainable than okay Someone's got to tell me what these are. <laughs> they just look, they might be delicious. And, and maybe if I knew what they were, they look bad. <laughs> they, they look weird, right? I just don't know what they are. Uh, they look like a burnt old, like smashed fries. But I, I could be totally wrong, right? Because it's definitely not something we have on our menu. So forgive me. I, I don't know what it is. The regular fries look good. I mean, yeah, everything's neatly wrapped. Uh... I mean, it again, it's just so different, like chicken nuggets or McNuggets, whatever the heck they're called, in like a fancy bowl. <laughs> like, what? This is so different. Switching to long-wearing glass the salads China, in a nice The French container. government promises to remain vigilant on this question. McDonald's has been doing very tiny steps towards improving their packaging for more than 30 years. Ironically, we made a video in German before knowing about all this, criticizing the chain for greenwashing their enormous trash footprint in Germany and pretend fixing the issue. Mm. Some EU directives and one chunky national law later, we get this. To us, this is a story of how business, if set on the right track through legislation, can really leap forward. McDo really did turn around the French anti-plastic legislation to their benefit, simply through introducing a design so noteworthy, people talk about it. Well, there you go. I, I'm going to love to see the comments on this. Uh, you know, love McDonald's or hate them. They are a household name. It's crazy, right? And like I said, I'm not a, a fan of them, but I would like to try them in different countries. <laughs> That's for sure. And it is fascinating that it, I guess you got to give them credit that they adapt. They, I mean, think about McDonald's. Like we go back to the beginning. Think about McDonald's stepping in to France in this example, somewhere that is just known for 
excellent cuisine, right? Fine dining, high end, you know, food experiences. And them stepping into that situation as a f- American kind of, you know, cheap fast food joint. How do they survive that? Well, somehow they have. It, it's had some bumps along the way. They've had some really questionable decisions along the way. <laughs> but look at them now. I mean, that's insane. It's also funny learning about this kind of stuff as an American because, again, McDonald's is everywhere in the U.S. It's just like, I guess, synonymous with like U.S. food cultures. Like everyone knows McDonald's, right? Everyone in America has been to a McDonald's at least once. You know, it's like so American. But when I do learn about McDonald's in different countries, it's always fascinating. It's like a different company. They always have way bigger menus, way more uh, regional menus. Um, and, and in this case, like totally different restaurants, different appearances, different interiors, different containers. Like it, it's insane. It's almost like they make more of an effort to fit in wherever they go in these, you know, other markets. And then in the U.S., they're just like, well, we're McDonald's. We're too big to fail, right? So we just have the boring old menu, and we keep raising the prices, and oh, well, no one will notice, right? (laughs) It's kind of like a simplified look at it, but it's kind of accurate. I don't know. This was really fascinating. Uh, Make sure to check that link down there and check out this whole video, including bits we didn't see, and definitely check out their channel. That was really well made. Uh, Just a fascinating piece about McDonald's in France and throughout Europe as a whole compared to the U.S. Uh, Much more to come. I would like to explore some McDonald's in different countries, see what we can find, even down to just the menus. Maybe I will throw one of my interactive reactions in there sometime where uh, we check out a McDonald's local to me and you can see the difference because trust me, the difference is going to be pretty apparent. (laughs) Please throw a like on there if you enjoyed this. Subscribe to be part of this amazing community. Excellent suggestion. Keep those awesome suggestions up. I really do appreciate it. That's about it for this one, y'all. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. And until next time, y'all, you will not catch me at a McDonald's here unless it's for a video. (laughs) I'll catch you later.